Hello and welcome to this Dawn Busters Taste Challenge. About 13 minutes late, I wanted to start at 5.30, but that didn't work out. Anyway, it's I mean, daytime now. 5.44 a.m. Central Time. June 28th, 2018. Well, we have two blended scotch whiskeys. One from back in 1923, Cuddy Sark, blended scotch whiskey. Nice bottle embossed with the compass on there. The spirit of adventure. They make other expressions, at least one other now, the Prohibition, but I've seen other versions too. The Prohibition's a longer aged. This used to be 86 proof, but it's like most of these liquors we talk about, most of these whiskeys, they've been dropped to 80 for whatever reason. John and Illy, good morning, Ron, I've been waiting. Okay, sorry, uh, just kept getting delayed. Okay. And we're going up against one from 1936. 13 years later, Clan McGregor was introduced. And it's now made by um, William Grant Company, but it was, before that was Popper Morgan, some unusual importing company. Because Bart Robinson, I think it was, I can't remember, no, who was it? Well, I can't remember, I, I think. I think I don't know. One of the people that comment a lot, and I'm sorry I can't remember. I, I just I'm not concentrating necessarily on what people are, or who's saying it, or like trying to memorize the name. I should say when I'm I'm thinking about other things. But uh, he was saying no, it came out in 1971. I said no, it's been around since 36, and I was able to find some corroborating data. Uh, Cuddy Sark. It's an independent company that owns it. It's not one of the big ones. It's, their main thing is Cuddy Sark. They do make some other stuff, but um, it's a good selling. It sells well. It's a top, one of the top volume Scott blended Scotch whiskeys on the market. Clan McGregor's a high volume seller too. You won't see advertisements for it. Cuddy Sark, you may see advertisements on oh Facebook feed or the internet or even uh mm, in a magazine or newspaper, maybe, but you know, you're not gonna see a television ad. I don't think. <clears throat> um it's sort of a, pre a premium brand. You can find it on sale sometimes, about $16 a bottle. Clan McGregor, well, it's a budget brand. It's always been a budget brand. They updated the label. They um, have a pretty nice website. They used to run magazine ads for it. And I drank a little bit of this now. Now, if you remember my last taste challenge, I got it wrong, but then it was kind of strange or interesting because I was saying, this is this and this is this. And I gave these attributes, which seemed to indicate they were the other one. And if you go back and watch the video, I said, I hope I'm wrong. And I was. Okay, so that was kind of um, odd. But I didn't have it pinned down enough to get quite a great handle on these, but I think I'm going to do better and better as I get through it. I'm excited about this, and I think that Clan McGregor is better and it's cheaper. Huh. I think you'll be able to tell those two apart pretty easily, but I'm not sure after watching your Royal, Royal Canadian versus VO Gold Dawn Busters earlier. Yeah. Hey, Spider, bring me a cutting of water right. What am I, a mirage? You got me on the pay no mind list, kid? I asked for a drink, you know. That was an interesting scene because the movie was supposed to be based on real events, but um, 
it seems like that whole thing with Spider was made up. Like there's no actual instance of that ever happening and somebody missing in New York with a nickname Spider or it was just something to add to the movie just to make you get the impression of how evil those guys were. Um, they were. Okay. Um, nice. Out oh, what am I doing? Um, this one here is darker. The one in my left hand is lighter. The one in my right hand is darker. The left hand must be cut saw because it's light. Yeah, Cuddy Sark. Claire McGregor is pretty dark. Do they add coloring to it? I don't know. I just, it's only aged three years. Cuddy Sark is aged. Um, I don't think they give you an age statement. The original easy drinking scotch. Yeah, it's easy drinking. These light ones tend to be that way. Earning. I mean, Edrington Distillers Limited, Glasgow, Scotland. This one. Not going to read all the, the height. Uh, 36 months. That's that's the normal age for these inexpensive blended scotch whiskeys. They'll usually just tell you three years. I can't wait to do the JW Dant because you look at the back of the bottle, it's got like an essay on it. <laughs> it's like the story of Scotch. And you can't believe they put that much writing on the back of a bottle. And uh, I said, I wonder if they added this. And I was looking at an old, there's a website called liquor.com. Got to make sure I don't glance down at these because they're obviously, I, I mean, you'll be able to tell that straw color as opposed to the deep gold, even a bronze and a flash. Um, Liquor.com, I think they sell old, unopened liquor bottles from 50, 60 years ago, even in some cases, or, you know, could be just 10 years ago. But uh, I was looking at the JW Dance blended scotch whiskey, and uh, now they had that same old essay on there from like, like 1973. I said, golly. Not every day you can buy a liquor bottle that's got an essay on it. Uh, the the uh, Seagram's VO Gold comes close to that. They got a big write-ups on the both sides. They ran out of room to go on the back. It's so extraordinary, although we did discontinue it. I don't say that. Okay. My... Now, to be fair to Cuddy Sark, it tells you right there on their website, this is designed for blending. It's really not designed for sitting and sipping, okay? VO Gold, uh, I mean, Siemens VO, they tell you that right there on the website. It's saying it up front. You know, you really don't want to buy this to sip. It's a blender. You want to buy it. I mean, it, yeah, a mixer. You want to buy it and make mixed drinks, highballs. Cocktails, whatever people call. Um, so I keep this down here on my stomach because I don't want to look. Oh, I'm letting them breathe. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, okay. First thing, first thing, first thing. They're both made predominantly with grain whiskey, which is like, you know, column still as opposed to pot still. The pot still is more expensive, more, they use that as more, supposedly makes more flavorful. And they use that for the malt, the single malt whiskeys that they blend with the column still grain whiskey, which is made out of corn, maize, you know, corn, corn. Same principle as the Canadian whiskey and the, American blended whiskey and the blended bourbon. That I didn't say they were the exactly the same process, but it's the same principle. And we did that uh, Suntory whiskey Tokai. Somebody was telling me all the Suntory whiskeys are single malt. No, they're not. Some of them are, but then 
the Suntorian, the, there's another one they make, I can't remember the name. They're blended. They use a predominant column still grain whiskey like corn, but over there it might be rice as the grain because we kept saying rice, rice, rice. If you watch the Suntory, I need to look, do a video search for some stuff I reviewed lately. I haven't watched all the videos. I got I to gotta make sure I've seen all the video reviews like the Suntory Tokai. I bet you there's a lot. And the, um, the one, John, you gave me the sweet water. Um, Triple tail. I forgot to check to see if there's videos. I was saying that to myself last night. You slip and you forgot to check. I know I got to get to that. Okay. Um, we kept talking about rice, rice, rice paper, rice. Well, you know what? It is a blend. It is blended with single malt and grain, and I bet you it's rice. But these are these are going to be predominantly corn, and it's going to have that sweetness like the canned corn, you know. Like Del Monte canned corn, you get that. You say, oh yeah, okay. Now this one here is just more like straight, sharp. If you want to say stark corn distillate, burnt. You would get that same sensation with a Kentucky Deluxe blended whiskey. Or a Heaven Hill Kentucky blended whiskey. Stuff like that. <sighs> Bora beans, eight star. You say, what about the smoke? What about the peat? Yeah, right. What about it? I'm picking up a little peatiness earthy soil but smoke no not getting that robert browning i think it was you huh robert that was talking about the cuddy sark was a huge brand yes it was it's still big but it used to be like really big doers j and b johnny walker have all eaten its market share right right i still want to try doers walmart has a lot of that big bottle J and B, I want to try that one. And Johnny Walker, that line. Well, you know, I want to try a lot of stuff, but there's only so many hours in a day, right? So many dollars in your wallet. But you just can't do it all, so there's no use even getting down about it and trying. When I first started doing beer reviews, I wanted to try everything, everything, everything. But then you realize you can't. And then when it exploded, when they you had the craft beer explosion, which might be turning into the craft beer implosion at this time, but... Uh, then it just kind of atomized the whole beer review thing because there were so many brands, so many obscure little brands that you see people reviewing this. And I don't watch the videos because I say, I can't relate to this beer. I can't watch a review for something I've never heard of. You know, it's like Jiminy Cricket Bruins, Tiny Dancer, Adam, Adam Infused, retroactive pale moniker lager hybrid fixation and i said i don't even know what that is and i can't made with pomegranate milk you know and i can't i can't i mean i would try it if i saw it but i can't relate to it and the whiskeys are getting that way with all these different variants now they got the crown royal mesquite texas mesquite now, this one here has more smoke, but I wouldn't exactly call it smoky. I would call it sweet and very grain corn. You say barley malts are grain. Yeah, I know. That's right. But this smells like corn grits. Oh, well, you know, a little peat, but um, you got a pretty sharp alcohol burn on this one, too. It's just like, whoa. Is this scotch or is this Barton American premium, um, premium American blended whiskey? Of course, you can tell them apart because, you know, those American premium American blended whiskeys premium. <laughs> 
they're not going to have any kind of peak note. But I'm telling you now, forget smoking. It might come across in the taste, but I'm just getting a lot of sweet corn liquor. I mean, not bad. I'm not saying, oh, it, tastes, it smells bad. I'm just saying it smells like like Black Oak, Arkansas at that concert in 1974, he says. It's like old days, ain't it? I mean, this smells like old days, don't it? Okay, taste time. Mm. I think the Clam McGregor is going to have more body. That's why I think I'll be able to tell them apart. Uh... Well, uh, hello, Ma. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, it's a while. That tastes like Albertson's <laughs> blended Amer American whiskey. You know what I mean? Kentucky blended whiskey, Albertson's. And my friend David was like, oh, that tastes like corn whiskey. Man, oh, right. he was raining and raving. I said, well, I don't really know what it is, basically. <laughs> he dumped it out. I said, now you insisted on drinking this. Then you dump it out. I said, come on, man. <laughs> That's not cool. <laughs> I said, if I'd have had that camera running, boy, I wish I'd have had that camera running to see that rant and rave. He's like, you don't buy this kind of stuff and think it's good. So I didn't pay $4.99 at Albertsons thinking it was good. I just bought it because it was cheap and I figured it'd be worth trying out. I never was under the impression that it was good. No. This has got to be Cuddy Sark because it, it has more of the smell of Scotland in it. That one has some of the smell of like Edison, New Jersey in it, you know what I mean? Like New Jersey crept into that thing. I'm not saying that in a bad way. Yeah, now you see this one here. Um, it's got more, It's there's an underneath bread, like, like a Trying to think of that kind of bread. What is that bread? It's like a, oh, it's really pale and it usually have like the flour on the top to be like round, real soft. People put butter on them. Not a dinner roll, but something, not a Kaiser roll, but something along those lines, something like maybe a little sourdough in it. Um, yeah. Can't find my mouth. Well, my eyes are closed. <sighs> it's almost like a paper in it, like a papery taste, like a loose leaf paper. Strange. I don't know, though. Both of these are like a straightforward alcohol burn, man. They're just like, wow. Uh, from my Cuddy, oh yeah, Cuddy came out in the early 20s, right? 1923, uh, early to mid 20s, kind more into the mid by 23 as a light scotch, like Jay and Jay and a man with sunglasses. Uh, Joseph Kennedy imported illegally during prohibition. I've heard stories about that, that that family was built largely on a uh, crookedness. <laughs> John says, from my recollection, the Clan McGregor seemed to have more body, more flavor. I thought the Cuddy Sark was more generic and less peaty. Well, I'm doing it blind right now, and um, I'm not getting a whole lot of action on either one of these. Like, I asked my daughter, did you finish the Clan McGregor? No, it's going to take years. I, I just didn't even, tr I don't think she's tried it since. We, I was at her house in September 2017, and she we reviewed it. She says, you know, I don't like scotch. I said, well, why don't you give me the bottle? Next time I visit, I'll drink it. She said, I never heard of somebody giving somebody something and then demanding that they take it back. 
I said, I'm not demanding that I take it back. I just got, I just, I'm like kind of crazy in the head about people wasting stuff. I just hate to see people waste things. And I would drink it. I'm not saying I would drink the Clan McGregor and be like, oh, wow, it's just, I can't believe it. I would just be drinking it for utilitarian purposes, you know, just to, to drink it. I was on a road trip with a beer reviewer a couple of years ago, and uh, apparently this is one reason this person got angry with me. She wanted to just throw all this food away. I said, what? I can't buy a big pizza and throw it away. I can't do that. I mean, if it was rancid or something, I would. But I mean, this huge pizza, good pizza too. And then eat three pieces and throw the rest away. I see people doing that all the time, though. I'm not pointing out anybody in particular. I'm just giving that as an example. I mean, my jaw drops. I see people, I was like, I say, ah, oh, is there a pacing problem in America? People buy all this food, they're just throwing it out, just pitching. You know, to eat a little bit of the Chinese food. Oh, yeah, and it's throwing it away. I said, what in the world is happening over here? I'm pretty sure I paid over $20 for the Cuddy Sark. I'm not, not a great value for a whole home product. I think mine was on sale, and I got it for $16 after tax. Uh, you know, $15.99. It wasn't $20. Yeah, I remember you paid a lot, and I was thinking, uh-uh, no way. All right, I'm gonna try to get this straight, but this is, but yeah, that wasting thing, I just, they got whiskeys I bought that I didn't like, but I didn't throw them away. Even that, <laughs> that, uh, brandy, the Hartley VS brandy. Well, that stuff was, uh, yo, no, 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 no. Now the VSOP was good. And the one I'm drinking now, the brandy, just called brandy that they used to make. I was drinking some of that last night. I was, I was saying, did they put black pepper in this? It's so interesting. I said, it has black pepper or something. And, um, but even the VS, I didn't throw it away. I just, you know, I'm, I did throw two beers away before though. The Jaguar malt liquor and the Boxer lager, I couldn't handle that. I said, well, this is not a case of being an ass and just wasting stuff. This is the case, a case of me buying stuff that's un, unholy. You know what I mean? It's like evil. I can't drink it. <laughs> and it was after the hurricane. I was already irritated because all this damage around here. And um, I had damage to my house. And I had no electricity. And electricity was off for days and days. And I could never get the beer cold. But that'll show you a bad beer when you can't get it dead cold. I mean, I had it cold in the ice chest with, with ice, but it wasn't dead cold, like sticking it in the freezer. No. And it just brought out so many bad things. <laughs> and these blind taste tests sometimes bring out bad things like that old tennis shoe commercial. Bad things, man. Bad things with Dennis Hopper. Uh, oh, boy. I gotta say that Tokai is blended scotch, basically. It's like Japanese version of scotch whiskey. It's the same thing, but it's just, they can't call it scotch because it's not from Scotland. But I um, think that's better than these two. Maybe because it's rice based. And you know, rice is a nicer filler than corn. You ever drink like a rice filled beer and you put it up against a corn filler beer? The rice seems nicer, something about. The corn is just too. <sighs> but it's subsidized by the government. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I guess the one in my right hand is better. It is a little more malty. It has more malt character. It's probably a higher percentage of single grain, <laughs> single malt grain. Uh, single malt whiskey, scotch whiskey. This one is just like, I bet you it's 80-20. They don't give you those ratios over there in Scotland, but I bet you it's mostly grain whiskey.
Well, they have a little smoke here, but it's more like blended whiskey smoke. Like, you no, know, literally, like if you get, like I'm talking about beams, get beams eight star. It has a smoke, but it's from the charred barrels, those old charred barrels. You'll pick up some of that old carbon, you know, but it's not like it was peated smoke, you know, like that. <laughs> All right. Are they terrible? No, they're not terrible. And that's my uh, comment on them. They're not terrible. Well, you said that's not really a recommendation. I know, but they're all right. Never think I'm fooling myself when I buy these kind of things, okay? I mean, I, mean, I know where I am. <laughs> you don't have to tell me where I'm at. You know what I mean? I don't have to go find myself or get my head together. I know what I'm dealing with. People say, you're always cruising the bottom shelf, buying all those cheap whiskeys. I say, I know. But I never said that I thought they were top shelf quality. I just do it because they're quaint and they're strange. <sighs> you know, it's not to, to exemplify their incredible attributes. I, it's not that, but they do have some character. It, you know, it's like watching um, It's Alive from 1969 that made for TV movie by Azalea Films. You don't watch it thinking it's, but these are better than that. You don't watch it thinking it's good. You just watch it because it's so bizarre. You say people made this as a movie and they, or Dracula versus Frankenstein, 1971. You just, it's, like a different universe, how this could be made. You know, these are not that to that level, but they're they're different. But Cuddy Sock's okay. It does have some little, yeah, it's got some little um, doughy quality. That's the word I'm looking for, like a dough. This one, oh, uh, boy, that hit me hard. That was like fumes there. This residual bit down here. Oh, wow. So I think this is the, the, the Clan McGregor, and I think this is Cuddy Sarger. It's time to, time to reveal. Well, if I'm wrong this time, I'll have no confidence whatsoever. Clan McGregor. I, have it. I had it right the last time, really, because I did like that backwards determination. Yeah, okay, so this is Cuddy Sark. Oh, all right. I could never throw away a perfectly good pizza. Oh, the humanity. I couldn't get over that. It's like, uh-uh, there's no way this guy's doing that. And it was chilly up there. It was like 44. To... The day I drove home, it was like literally 44 degrees at 12 noon. And it was like 42 at night. I said, we never get weather like that until late November, you know. So to be, a, be in June, you know. I said, this pizza, you know, a pizza is like an industrial product almost. It was just a cheese pizza. It might have had pepperoni on it. I can't remember. I think it was cheese. I said, there's no way this is going to go bad in my trunk. <laughs> it will never go bad. And it did not go bad. I ate it all. And uh, over days, took me days. And uh, it was so nice sleeping up there, like the windows would be open, you know, and you had this cold, cool air at night, dry air. I said, huh, this is June. June in New York, it would be like November in Louisiana or February, you know, I couldn't get over it. I think that's why I like Japanese beer so much. The rice adjunct, Asahi Super Dry is one of my favorites. Right, 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 right. He says, don't forget the camo that you hurled at your fence. Oh, right. Camo is the kind of beer that it ought to be wasted, you know. It shouldn't even be purchased. It's like it has no, no redeeming qualities. Even Eric Alliance fan, you know, he was reviewing it and you could say he's trying to grasp some positive things about it. But even he said to me, he said, nah, I, I couldn't keep it going. It was just no good. <laughs> it was really trash, you know. It's like really trash. These are not trash, but they're not too great. But they're all right. Okay, so Clan McGregor. A little waxiness. Yeah, I mean, it, it's 
it's okay. It's eight fifty a bottle. So for eight fifty a bottle, you know, it's okay. All right. I'm not going to make a big deal out of it because I paid eight fifty for it. I didn't go buy. You know, I didn't go buy a spicy tostada Taco Bell for a dollar and expect it to be like a, a gourmet Mexican restaurant. I mean, I have enough brains to know that. I bought it because it was fast, cheap, it was tolerable, and I ate it. And it was actually, you know, like arguably good. And this one is argu arguably good. <clears throat> and this one is a good deal better, really. It's it's not arguably good. It actually is good. And um, yeah, I can see why, you know, $15, $16 a bottle. I can, it seems like it's about there. You know, it seems like it's right about where it should be. Uh, you know, it's like Jack Daniels. It's $22 a bottle on sale. And it kind of tastes like it should be there, you know. I always say bad things about Jack Daniels. But um, I have to admit, though, when I'm ragging on it, I do have to admit that, yeah, but it does have a lot of int it does have unique characteristics about it that you can't really mimic although some people come close but you can't quite there's something um like i said unique okay so um this did not turn out as a surprise except that i didn't like them as much as i thought i would but that's my problem i get used to the flavors of whatever i'm drinking bourbon American blended, Canadian blended, blended scotch. And it maybe they they might have negative attributes. They'll start to come out. As I drink on them, they'll start to develop. And I say, wait. And I notice, and I don't care what anybody says, I have to be true to myself, you know. Like the Beastie Boys said, be true to yourself and you will never fall. So um I think there's a whole lot of commonality with the blended whiskeys. America, Canada, Scotland, Ireland, you know, Ireland, Scotland. I don't know about Japan. There's a there's more commonality than there is differentiation. I think there's a basic commonality. Like there's a the now there's diff, you know, the like let's say it's like a, a hemisphere. The the center of it is very similar. The differentiation comes in that 20% rind, that rim, the crust. So yeah, you're gonna you're gonna know it's an American blended or a blended bourbon or a Canadian blended whiskey or a blended scotch or a blended Irish whiskey or blended scotch. You're gonna know that from that perimeter, the periphery. But the center, the bulk, the heart of it, the body of it, the the beat. That's like with music, the body of it. That's where you get the similarities, you see. Hello, Ron. Hello, Maxwell. Hello to you over there in, in Europe, Eastern, Far Eastern Europe. Well, I'm off now. This has been another taste challenge. It was a challenge. It went a little long, but I had a fear that that would happen because it would be a little kind of complicated. But I think as I go on, it's not going to be as long because I've kind of begun even more sort of grasp the concept with which I'm dealing. You understand? I'm grasping the concept. And so next we have uh, one hundred pipers to go up against Clan McGregor. That could be tough. That could be tough. Then we're going to go against Scoresby. I think Scoresby is going to kill Clan McGregor. Uh, honestly, I think Scoresby is going to wipe it out, but I, I don't know that until I do the taste challenge. You know, so all right. And then we're going back to American blended whiskey for good or ill. For good or ill. Thanks for watching this video production. You have a wonderful Thursday and a fantastic weekend.